What is going on, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Pod Scum. This right here, as you all know, is the podcast where we dive into the deep, dark, murky waters with a plethora of legendary guests. I am, of course, your host, your bastard of ceremonies, the number one scumbag, Rex Ruger. That's R E Triple X. You know me as the King of Sleaze, a.k.a. the Hair Metal High Priest, and most importantly, a.k.a. Diamond David Lee Raw Jr. Folks, take a look. Should be pretty undeniable at this point that you are looking at the son of glam. The front man for the band just smoked a few grams. I got a million fans because I'm your ice cream man. Mr. Wap Bop, Lou Bop, Wap Bam Bam, Shazam, hot damn. Oh, I'm feeling good. Of course, everybody in the house, including you, Looking good. Ooh, I look extra good today. Mm. Shame to waste it. For me, that's made possible by, of course, don't leave home without it. Coming to you, as always, from the Lavender Lounge of Love. Been revamped a little. Little new decor in here. Always joined by one part of the decor that never changes. The great Keith Hernandez puppet. And we are, of course, bringing you the No Frills podcast. You do get plenty of thrills. That's looking at these faces, of course. Mr. Global does it again. This interview going overseas once again to our rock and metal brothers in other countries. That's right. But it's the No Frills podcast because we don't know much about technology. We're very lo-fi. It's very crude. It's very sparse and spartan over here. We give you the bare necessities. And what else do you need? It doesn't got to be perfect. It never will be out in the ether out in the cloud. It's too crazy out there. I'm done looking for perfection. We are at the mercy of technology, folks. It's all we can do. So we does what we does over here. But today I'm very excited about uh, our guest. I've been really digging on this band quite a bit. Uh, the boys are from England. Uh, and uh, we will chop it up with him un momento here while we wait for him to come in. And uh, of course, this is another part of why this is the No Frills Podcast. Here I am giving you a sneak peek behind the curtain. As you all know, I am the not Motley crew of podcasting. You see it all. No editing. No slick tricks. I can't bounce anything across your screen or give you cute animation or intro music or any of that bullshit, those bells and whistles. You get that stuff, you're just pissing your life away. You need the meat and potatoes. And that is the uh, era that I am from. 50 years old, we dive into the meat and potatoes. I don't want the side salad. I don't want the, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want the stuff that's going to get in the way of the good stuff. I mean, even right now, obviously, listening to me, this is, of course, you know, the good stuff. Because you are looking at the second greatest front man to ever do it. And by the way, I am still looking for phenomenal players for my glam metal Passion project, Love Sword, which happens to also be the nickname for uh, Junior down there. But I digress. Uh, so yes, Love Sword still looking for players. And if you are watching this right now on the YouTube channel, please like and subscribe. Please go give us a look. See on Facebook, uh, everything kind of gets uh, announced and put on Facebook. Uh, new episodes. You know, whatever bullshit is going on in the pod scum world. Um, and of course, as I said, please like and subscribe. Go back and peruse the old stuff, the old interviews. Uh, at the time of this recording, we're 127 episodes into this thing. Uh, the subscribers just continue to just grow at a nice steady pace. I thank all you guys for that. Uh, somebody out there, somebody out there likes me. <laughs> Somebody out there likes what I'm doing. It's my life's work, folks. It's my life's work bringing you the kick-ass content. And hey, I mean, you know, it's uh, it's not easy being the hardest working man in show business. Speaking of that, our guest is here now. So you listen to me drone on and on enough. Let's get down and shop it up with them on Podscum. I think we have our technical difficulties finally figured out. At least they better be. Are we figured out here now, Xander? Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. 
and I finally given up, man, full disclosure. I finally given up on saying, you know what, man, I just had a conversation with my son about this. There's no way in hell when you're at the mercy of the internet, that there's anything you can do about the quality of episodes. Sometimes I obsessed yeah. about having it perfect for so long. And like, I'd watch one back and I'd be like, God, I got pixelated there for like 10 seconds or my guests got froze. But in the long run, nothing you can do about it. Right. No, I mean, it the is what it is. Are, are good things, I think. It, it is, it is. It keeps people on their toes. Uh, Xander Bradley, uh, Cryptic Shift. I'm so glad that I discovered this band, man, because I really dig what you guys do, man. It's a very interesting uh, approach on uh, extreme metal, what you guys do. Oh, well, thanks, man. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Um, before I get into current stuff, uh, you know, what was your uh, what was your upbringing like over there in uh, England? Uh, how early on did you know that music was what you were going to do? Like, were you a kid that had aspirations of doing anything else, or did you get bit by the music bug pretty early? Um, I'd say I've, I've always been into music, but I never really thought, you know, well, for a long time that I want to be a, a rock star, or you know, um, yeah. I think I just I just like music and it's just something I did. It's not something that, you know, I didn't I didn't want to be like like a big rock star. Or, um but yeah, music's always been like kind of a big thing. My parents are writing to music, introduced me to a lot of stuff when I was younger and sort of taught me how to um like love music and be obsessed about certain certain bands and like and naturally, I just because of that, I, I became obsessed about certain parts in certain songs, and I liked like the intricacies of songs, and I yeah. just picked up on like little things that, little specific things like a, a certain moment of like guitar feedback in a in a track or something. I, was, I always thought like stuff like that was cool. And and, was, yeah. and do you remember, uh, you know, you used the word. About obsessed uh, you, do you remember a particular artist or an album you know do you remember that first uh that feeling that overwhelmed you of of of, of what you were obsessed with you know uh, was there one that got its hooks into you very early on that you that resonated with you that you remember yeah man there's a band called ride from um from england okay and they're like a shoegaze band like alternative rock in the mm -hmm. early 90s and they have a track called drive blind and it's from one of their like early two EPs, but I remember I got this this thing called it was called Smile. It was like a compilation of the first EP Ride, and then the next one which was Play. And this track Drive Blind is it's got this really nice like high pitched riff going on that's like catchy, and it's got all this reverb on that's real nice. And it's it's kind of like a slow like turning sort of track with like these heavy heavy guitar distortions and like when did i get into this maybe i was probably like 10 or something and there's this certain section in the middle where like the tension's been building and and then like the ramp up the speed and they yeah. all like play faster they go like slow burn kind of thing da, 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 da. and they do like this big mad like crescendo thing yeah that's cool it just explodes into this like wall of noise just just utter mayhem and the, the symbols are like going yeah like the, it just hits the last hit of the symbol and all the guitar feedback's going mad and you can hear them like scraping on the strings and it's it's just insane and then they do this drum fill and then it all falls back into like the original riff of the song and yeah. it grooves along just and comes that, together that bit in particular is like probably the one moment in in music that's catapult me to, and the name of the band and the name of the band is ride yeah ride yeah okay okay, okay. yeah like the, the one of the, like the pioneers of that shoegaze sound okay early 90s. okay and 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 you know uh for you guys specifically uh cryptic shift as a band uh like what is the band's creative process like like does someone come in you know when you guys are going to do an album or do a project does someone come in with the lion's share of the ideas or do you guys all kind of collaborate yeah, it's it's me for the most part, really. Um, a lot of the basically everything's sort of predetermined. Like track titles have been set in stone for like the upcoming album and the, the album after that for years and years and years. And and it's it's like laying foundations for 
the whole story structure that seems to like ground everything yeah and keep it like a whole cohesive thing because it's not really they're not really songs it's more it's more of like a movie or something you know it's not just a collection of 10 10 tracks it's it's whatever the, the sounds that appear on it are like whatever right. fall into this like jigsaw puzzle of like this this story and uh yeah everyone uh plays their own parts really i'll come up with say there's a riff um and it's like kind of obvious what kind of beat's gonna go on it mm -hmm. and and then ryan will like either play attempt to play what i've put in like the guitar profile or something or like do something completely different um you know but everyone's everyone's welcome to play around with their parts you know and and as a band, uh, uh, do you remember? Do you remember? Uh, and this is going back a couple of years. Do you remember what particularly was going on for you guys musically, and how it was affected and or derailed uh, when COVID hit? What kind of impact did that have on you guys? What kind of stuff did you have in the works that got the plug pulled on it? Anything? The record came out on May the fourth, so it was like what was that? Two months or so into the yeah, the whole Star thing. Wars Day. <laughs> exactly exactly yeah. yeah yeah um yeah about two months in and we were kind of, we had that two months to sort of prepare what to do we were like okay these we, we had like a bunch of shows in the uk planned up um our official brain were actually going to tour at that point and they were playing like the venue our venue near us that that's like our second home temple of boom and they were going to play there and we were going to like support them and it was going to be our like release show which yeah. would have been real cool yeah you know, playing with them um and we, we were playing on like doing the european tour we did one with the uh, kill town bookings with bedsaw um that was a year ago and that was like pushed back years and years because of all that but i mean I've, I've said it a bunch of times before but i think the the whole pandemic thing helped visitations um like i think it helped it a lot people would sat down and they had the they had the mindset to like get really deep into the album yeah yeah and 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 you know uh when i was coming up with topics and, and looking for bullet points and stuff to talk about uh you know obviously i came across some of the metal websites uh that obviously had reviewed the album uh you know extremely good reviews uh one one uh, journalist called it uh 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 progressive phenomenal progressive technological astro death themes what does that mean who's the one that's obsessed with the uh what's going on out in the uh out in the uh the, in the ether up in the clouds what you know wherever you want to call it space it, 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 are you the guy who has that fascination with that uh all of us man all, all, all of you us, um, i do I too mean, yeah well yeah I think, that's why I, I think that's why i connect to it man i had a hard time like i had a conversation uh with, you know with my son last night and, uh, and of course, taking into account that it was 11:30 at night, and I was under the influence of, uh, of of quite a bit of marijuana. But looking up there, I got very philosophical and thought, I cannot believe, man, that as far as the sky extends, that there can't be more shit out there. I I get the feeling like well, like when you write stuff, is that it, it, would that be fair to say that that's a belief that you have as well? Yeah, of course. I I think it's inevitable, really. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's as ambiguous as people believing in ghosts or not. I think. Yeah. I think it's pretty much guaranteed. Um, yeah me personally and um and ryan us two especially are really into star wars yeah um being born in like the mid to late 90s and growing up with the star wars episode one two three yeah which is awesome and all like the video games that came out with it and yeah how much, how much like they pushed that so that was like a the biggest biggest thing in the world for us for sure and um and John and Joss are, are right into it as well, of course. And we all have these interests of um, either like games, movies, books, or whatever. And it's all in it's all in like the same ballpark that that just really slots into a uh, cryptic shift. And now, and now, correct me for not knowing this, but uh, are you guys a uh, uh, a DIY band, or are you guys on any type of label? Yeah, um, Visitations came out on Blood Harvest Records from Sweden. Okay. And then uh, about a year after that, or so, or so, Metal Blade Records 
we're, we're now working with them towards that's a the big next one. album. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be awesome. Yeah. And, and, uh, you know, when you take visitations, uh, you know, uh, you know, when you present it to the label, uh, you know, I've got the statistics here. It's a little over 46 minutes. Uh, 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 do you guys sit around as a band and think, you know, because of all the, tr all the trends and people's listening habits, you know, do you guys sit around and think about, you know, the release format in terms of like how long we want to make a project Do we want it to be a full LP? Cause obviously it's a very polarizing topic. A lot of people are, are doing uh, uh, EPs, you know, the, uh, the, they're not putting out large bodies of work or they're flooding the market with singles and, and, and trying to keep themselves relevant. Do you guys mm -hmm. have a definitive opinion on that? Like what feels right for you guys as a band? No, forget the trends, man. Um, yeah. The opening track Moonbelt Immolator turned out to be nearly 26 minutes and yeah it was only like when when um we were talking blood harvest that we considered oh that that's like the limit of of the format of the the technology of vinyl like yeah. 26 minutes is like is just right yeah so you know no not all i mean the next album is gonna, gonna be longer for sure it's just it's just all art you have to you have to place all the pieces so it's it's nicely presented and yeah you know, even down to the the track titles like how how long the title is mm -hmm. and the track titles under it and like the track uh listing creates like a little pattern and sometimes sometimes albums are, are um i'm not too big of a fan of when albums have every track's like one word yeah <laughs> looks kind of boring but if if it's like you know got yeah. a bracket in there it's got a curl on and i really like adventurous stuff like that in the track listing so it's all, it's all just art man well, and I think what you guys do in terms of, of the themes that you deal with in your songs, it's important because, you know, I'm under the belief that all albums in some way, shape or form are concept albums, meaning just what mm. you said. You know, every song seems to flow and there seems to be a cadence and it's meant to be listened to in a completely fully immersive experience. I mean, you would agree with that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, sitting down and listening to Visitations is not something where you're kind of like, Oh, I like track two. And then I'm going to go over here to, I mean, I know it's only a couple of tracks, but even if it were extended out and that wasn't a 26 minute song and that was three or four separate songs, you know, it's meant to be listened to that way. But do you worry about getting blowback, uh, you know, like from a label when you do come and hand them a 26 minute song of them saying, you know, people aren't listening to music like this no more. I love the fact that you did it, but is there any blowback from the label? Like where they say, dude, I mean, people aren't listening to 26 minute songs very rarely, you know? Uh no I, I don't think i, I love the move by the way should, i love it yeah yeah i don't think as an artist you should worry about that whatsoever you know you sh if you've got an idea and you're obsessed about it and you're really like passionate about it then you should follow it through to its end and and if um if it turns you in certain directions like like when, when we're writing the music um we've got like the music and then like the the sci-fi adventure as well so as you build in the sci-fi story, you might have an idea, oh, at this point, the character doing this certain thing would be really cool. So like in Moonbelt, is the last clean section is when the guy is running through this space station and um, he's like opening this airlock, running through to the next room, opening the airlock, running through to the next room. And then I came up with this idea about, um, like, very much imagining it as a movie, but it comes to the next airlock. And the next room depressurized blows out into space yeah you know so he's like you know he gets yeah. dragged out and he has to like clamber along all the debris and get back in and that was like a little addition and uh, into the story and then subsequently in the music it's like right we need to add a little moment of sudden like crescendo and then like this clean bit for space and then back get back to like the thrash metal speedy stuff so you know if if the music is if you need to join two sections of music you're like oh, i really like this as an ending for the song and i've got this riff so i need to get there you know sometimes it might take one riff you might you might do that but but maybe you'll this riff will suddenly you'll invent this other riff that flows on really nicely to this other riff you've invented and it just goes on and and then you get back to the ending that you wanted it's, yeah. it's all just natural it's like it's like as if it was meant to be 
Well, so it does my heart good being a 50 year old guy because I, I you know, I, obviously, uh, you know, I, I, I did have different listening habits. You know, I was accustomed to getting, you know, full length albums. I love the fact that and, and, and even beside the 26 minute songs, I, I'm looking at the lengths of some of the other ones. You know, you've got, you know, two other songs on there that are over seven minutes. You know, it, it, it harkens yeah. back to when Metallica used to do that on a regular basis on their albums. You know, everything was these these six, seven, eight minute long opuses. You know, I mean, yeah, man, Metallica did it. Um... I remember, I remember getting into Led Zeppelin quite a bit as as, yeah. as well, and they always had long songs. And I mean, even look at look at like Mastodon, Opeth, um, yeah. Gojira as well. That they all have albums that are like well over an hour. Yeah, know? yeah. You got to be able to have some patience to really enjoy art, though. But I, I mean, if you're going to get into a band and you just want hasty, fast, yeah, you know I mean, you go listen to something that's very punk rock. Like maybe you go throw out a Ramones album where you get 25 songs and they're all a minute and a half. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you, know, you want that, then you can go get that for sure. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. You have to have the the balance, you know. And and yeah. and as a guitar player yourself, uh, 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 you know, I'm sure you know if you play an instrument, you're always getting asked uh, who your influences are, and I don't like to word it that way, you, you know, because obviously you put your own stamp on an instrument. But who are some guys, uh, you know, guitar players? Since you do play guitar, uh, who you enjoy their playing? Uh, you know that you're a fan of like where you'll say you know if you're here if you hear them playing you know i mean you stop and you appreciate them um i'll go off some like more modern ones because you know I've, everyone loves like steve Vai and my yeah. free from that but i mean garrett from a uh, void ceremony if you know them mm -hmm. he's he's a he's a great player and, it, and like if you listen to like the demo the ep the debut album and then the new one like his progression is is like really really cool and especially in like the latest album that the like jazz fusion is like is really like got yeah. it, like a really sweet spot that's sick the, the the final track about a minute in he's got this lead that's that's got all these like really tasteful pauses in and, and instead of like starting like bang on the bar is there's like little pauses and off beats and it's and it's not like a really complicated lead it's and it's like singable that's something that has always been really cool about about garrett especially on the the foul origins of humanity ep the, i mean those three tracks have all got like really nice sort of singable little licks yeah so, yeah man he's one of my favorites yeah and what is the uh 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 the mindset you know to, you know to take me to the mindset of like you guys are still uh a band that's you know still very early in your career uh you know as i mentioned earlier the mu music business having changed so much from what it was 20 30 years ago you know big big record contracts and labels and you know even the way we're consuming music uh, has changed so much that when you're a band that's in your position you know what moves do you make nowadays because the formula has obviously changed you know to keep propelling your band forward i i, I know bands are still putting video you know, but you're still using video uh you know as a forum uh an artistic forum is it putting out a great album uh, it, is it connecting? Uh, you know, I, I mean, I know a lot of it seems to be a, a competition on social media. So sometimes, you know, the, the most talented bands aren't getting recognized, but the people with the you know with the most profile on there. But like, what do you concentrate on most when you're a young band? I mean, obviously, the, you know, the music and the song quality uh, has got to be there, man. But what are the other ancillary stuff that you do nowadays to keep catapulting your band forward? Um. To like elaborate on what you said about how like there's certain things you feel like you have to do and like to to get noticed like on the social media stuff. I remember like starting the band, um, it was all like everyone locally bands around then. It was all about it's all about Facebook. How many Facebook likes you had, and there was bands right. out there that, like a band had just formed and it was they had three thousand likes and it's right. So you you've bought them off for uh, yeah yeah <laughs> whatever. Yeah, just, just stupid stuff like that. But I mean, if you're a band, um, I mean, we've been around like ten years now, so we've like really established what what Cryptic Shift is, and with all all like the space themes, science fiction themes, um, and like the the style of music, it's we feel like that we we don't really need to like push in the direction same direction as everyone. You know, we did a little action figure. I've got, I've got him here. We've, we've got this action figure. I feel like this. Yeah. The guy from the 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 story. You know, and it's got this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Thing. Yeah. So I got an action man. Little like description of all the little stuff. And yeah, that's cool. I mean, 
we're really into like all the, like, you know, like all, all about Star Wars, like the prequels, collecting little Tusken yeah. Raiders or all the little, you know, all that. Yeah. So you just have to do shit that excites you, really. And then yeah. that's tied tie into the band. Um, like I've been writing the the story of the the album as like a novel that's like under construction and, and i've never written a book before so yeah it's daunting and um and then i want to do uh remember those fighting fantasy kind of books yeah where, yeah where you have to roll a dice and you turn to a certain page and i, I want to do one of them and i mean if if people are into it into like the band they'll you know they'll probably be into that as well you know like if they like us of course oh yeah 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 i mean i mean for god's sakes man i mean uh, you know a lot of it really is about branding and uh and marketing i don't think using those ancillary tools like action figures or you know as i said there's a lot of bands like still making videos you know i remember a time when mtv actually played fucking music videos you know what i mean and that time is the time is obviously long gone by but there is still a, a, a place for them there's still a uh you know a useful tool but uh you know i mean the action figure kind of stuff i mean you know look at the guy like paul you know our uh, gene simmons i mean you know say what you want about kiss but they were marketing geniuses though i mean for god's sakes you yeah. could be buried in a kiss coffin if you want to be i mean you know i mean yeah, they branded amazing. everything <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Same. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and on videos um we didn't do one for visit visitations but um i mean obviously we're going to do one for the next album and and we're talking about it a lot and it's we don't want some some dumbass like backstory with hiring an actor and it'd be yeah. all cheesily tying it in with like footage of us you know we'd rather it be like straight to the point and and definitely like us something like like hangar 18 or uh Holy yeah. Wars, you know stuff like that with like the alien props and we're even researching stuff like uh, how to how to like build sci-fi props and sci-fi like background and yeah you know, from like youtube videos of people who like make their own little sci-fi shots yeah that, that's it's what they're weird. into and so trying to figure out how to tie that stuff in to make like the to doing a video like some like us because a lot of videos do do just pop up on you on your phone i mean that's how people consume sure. it. oh blah blah's got a new video and you know maybe they won't even watch the full thing they'll watch it, the the 10 second TikTok clip so and and and, and, you know, obviously we're both in agreement that the aliens are out there somewhere. Uh, if they somehow managed to tap into this podcast and they are listening right now, would you be pleased if the aliens came down and made a cameo in the video? Are aliens yeah, welcome? Very welcome. Yeah, they're very yeah. welcome. Aliens are welcome at the video shoot. So there yeah. you go. I mean. Well, I, I will say that um, visitations from Enceladus. Enceladus is the one of the moons of Saturn. Okay. And I created a whole, like, fantasy story based off that and the recently like two days ago just discovered um some phosphorus in the in the like plumes that come out of the geysers on the moon which is like a building block of life so we might be getting close to seeing yeah. some real aliens and you obviously got some very definitive ideas because you're saying you're writing a lot of these lyrics uh, well before i get to that question uh, uh uh what is your individual you know we talked about the band's creative process but what about yours uh, you know obviously you've got a lot of ideas you're drawing a lot of inspiration from the movies the books the you, you, you know the stuff that you consume but what's your individual process like in, in terms of like do you treat it like a job where you say like you know some of these some guys in the business are just very disciplined like they'll say you know uh you know from one to five i'm going in there and i'm and i'm gonna write music or are, are you the kind of guy that's just kind of like jotting down shit throughout the day and it's kind of coming to you uh you know at various times it's definitely like changed and morphed over the years as as you grow as a person and as your life changes yeah but yeah definitely just jotting down ideas all the time I used to have a bunch of notepads and then i've got this app on my phone called evernote and it's like a really cool note taking app and yeah and I've, in the google drive i've got loads of notes in there and it's it's all just a bit of a mess just ideas everywhere yeah yeah you know? And, 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 you know, obviously the way you're constructing these, you know, as you mentioned earlier, you know, you're kind of writing them like, you know, in the style of a novel, uh, you know, and they certainly say that all people have like a book in them somewhere. Is that an, is that an avenue you would ever explore? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. 
the the story of the visitations album is going to continue for a few albums uh, and i definitely want to make that into a book of some sort and yeah i've got i've got too many other ideas as well but just my mind just like just overflows with all these ideas so yeah uh, but my other band slime lord we've got an album coming out soon as well and, and that's that's similar as well it's got a story to it and okay you've got loads of really cool story beats in that and i'm imagining up uh ideas for the second album for slime lord as well so yeah what style and for people that don't know like what's what style of music is uh you know because i came across you obviously with cryptic shift uh what style of music is slime lord uh very similar a thrash death metal type thing no we started off just wanting to do like straight up death metal a bit a bit more simple laid back than cryptic it's got a lot of it's like simple slow riffs uh, a lot of people were like oh it's it's doom death doom yeah you know and, and but as you when you make a band and, and you get into it you, you fall in love with it and it becomes becomes something more than than like what you started it for yeah and uh, the new album's like really exploring some really cool uh avenues it's like mostly like death doom stuff but it's got a lot of weirder ambient atmospheric weirdo riff sections so fans of death metal yeah if we were to get you know uh, and I, you know i'm sure with all the material that you write you probably have a definitive uh, opinion on this you know so to take a left turn from you for, from music uh you know i'm sure you have a definitive idea about this if there are aliens out there and you, you know you, you and i both agree that there's there's probably something out there uh uh you know what would you imagine the experience would be like if we were to encounter them i mean do you believe that there would be forces out there that could be lined up against us or do you think that this would be uh, uh could potentially be uh, uh very beneficial to us very good question um i feel like if they were out there they were gonna yeah, fuck this up and it would have probably happened already but then again yeah, maybe, not. maybe um well, going off like the, the discoveries with Enceladus, I think if we do manage to get a probe over there and and like the probe lands and we've got like video footage, it's probably just going to be little ants or something or little microbes or little mushrooms or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that would be cool in itself, but if big like Independence Day aliens were going to come in, then... A little scarier, yeah. Yeah, would, would we react like the movies and get all the fighter jets out or or would it um oh what's that movie the, well obviously will smith is going to be the last man standing like that's what we're led to believe <laughs> in an alien overrun world man that he's the guy we want to get behind obviously but you know i mean i'm yeah, not so sure he'll slap them all down yeah he'll, he'll slap them yeah <laughs> he'll give them all the chris rock treatment <laughs> yeah, yeah. um uh now Obviously, I get a lot of questions in the comment section. I am not a musician myself, but you, you know, I always get those guys who say, "Man, I like the sound of that band, man." But like, you didn't ask him any tech questions, so you know, I don't know anything about it, man. But what are you as far as like gear, man? You got specific guitars that you you love to play that you feel like get the best tone for you? Yeah, th this is my main one. Oh, that's a beaut. Yeah. 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 And that is made yeah. by who? That's BC Rich. Okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, awesome. It's not like the most comfortable thing to play. <laughs> but, like I've got a Jackson Warrior I play a lot as well, and and that yeah. one's like really smooth. Like you know this bit here where your hand fits, it's like so smooth and like. But this one, it's just a block. It's kind yeah. of like horrible and a bit more like brutal to play. But but I think playing like the stuff I play where like you're really passionate about it, and you have to like really get in the moment every time you play it, and there's a lot of like weird techniques where you kind of like beating the guitar up and that that one's like really perfect for that uh, stuff in the area that you live in right now man like what's the music scene as far as like uh is like other bands that play extreme metal in the area that you're in uh you're part of the world is it a good music scene where you are leads um for the last 10 plus years has been really big into hardcore yeah uh, grind car punk kind of stuff and the, the venue I was talking about earlier, Boom, is like a really big hot spot for that. So that's like the main thing that's going on in Leeds. Uh, other, 
like extreme metal acts in the area there's there's basically none but yeah. there's, there's a few good ones in scotland and like down south uh london but leeds is like right in the right in the middle of uh, the uk yeah yeah um are you a guy that gets to go out and see a lot of live music as a fan um definitely much less these days to be honest but yeah if there's ever like most of the bands that we're all friends with really because we've all like played together so if 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 um if there's a band that that's from up north like newcastle or something comes down and plays plays boom then then yeah we'll go see it for sure are there bands that are are there bands uh is there any band a band or two that comes to mind that are on your bucket list of bands that you'd like to see live that you haven't seen live that you're a fan of i've got so many i don't even know where to begin but um at one point i definitely did but i feel like i've seen so many bands now like yeah. when people ask me what's my favorite live show ever i've, I've kind of got no idea anymore they're all just blended into one king diamond i'd like i like to see king diamond with the whole yeah. stage set up with the like the, the gothic railings and the staircase and all that'd be awesome now uh, that's a guy that knows mm -hmm. how to do a concept album the right way too you know he yeah is, yeah yeah and, and, about Abigail the whole, and them i mean those are genius albums I mean, yeah, and especially the whole stage set up, the whole like theatrics of it, and that's definitely something that I'd aspire for, to, towards for Cryptic in the future. Well, right now over here in the states, you know, from what I understand, you know, he's doing the, you know, they're doing a full-on tour with Merciful Fate. So I think he's yeah. kind of got his hands, you know, he's got his hands tied, uh, uh, you know, he's got himself tied up with that. But uh, I'm sure there'll be more, you know, just King Diamond by himself. I mean, I don't think he's going anywhere. I mean, he's been through, a, he's been through a lot. I mean, I, I think he went through some kind of a transplant or something, didn't he? His health was really dire for a, a bunch of years yeah. back. Mm, I mean, he was really sad. down and out for a little while. Um, is making it here in the United States and getting some traction here in the States, uh, is that important to an overseas band? Yeah, we, we, we need to get over there, definitely. Uh, but it's it's real hard, real expensive, I especially know. all the visa stuff. It just seems to be get, getting worse and worse. Uh, but when the next album comes out, I think, I think it's pretty much guaranteed that we'll be definitely be coming over, for sure. And if you can play like, uh, you know, if you could put your your know, concert promoter hat on and play uh you know and play uh concert uh, uh promoter uh is there a band that you would like to be on tour with if you had like a dream tour where like you could put yourself on a bill with like a band or two mm. probably gorguts performing like obscure and from wisdom to hate yeah that's back that'll yeah. be ace yeah and then um Gorgia. Yeah. Big yeah, bigger is yeah. bigger. What about like what you know, we just talked about King Diamond obviously doing concept albums. Mm. Where do you stand on other bands that have been have over the course of time, you know, kind of kind of tackled a lot of the same stuff you guys tackle in your lyrics? You know, uh uh, uh you know, like what kind of stuff could be out there, like whether it's aliens or technology, like when you look at a band like a, like a Voivod or something like that. Yeah, you know, are there other bands that do that kind of thing, you know, that you can step back and say, you know, I I kind of like the stuff that they're tackling. Um I mean Vector did a, a similar thing on yeah. Terminal Redux. Yeah. That was ace. That was because that started on like the previous album. The final track, Outer Isolation, was like the yeah the prologue to the the album three so that 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 was really cool and then uh, yeah voivod did that whole thing with Corgle the exterminator didn't they, they yep. had like a yep. song yep. on each album for for like 20 years or something yeah and then there's a band out of uh 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 out of the netherlands that i really like called uh cryptosis and like they're kind of doing like a thing on like they just put out their debut album it's, it's called bionic swarm and it's very oh, much yeah. set, yeah. it's very much set in like a dystopian like you know slightly ahead in the future and it's not so much aliens but like the you know the concept is you know we've been overrun by the you know technologies you know kind of all swallowed up kind of you know mankind a little bit and i like a good i like a good well done concept album though it keeps me yeah, best yeah. the cryptos is like the, the thrash metal one the yeah they're only three guys too well. yeah and only three guys yeah. too yeah yeah, yeah. extremely yeah. impressive man a very high musicianship though i mean very very progressive stuff awesome yeah you would like it yeah bionic swallow yeah i'll check it out man. yeah I've, I've had a couple of the guys on here man great guys and very impressive you know like when you hear the instrumentation and and how how prolific they're playing and then you know to realize that they're only 
a three piece because that's kind of a dying art in and of itself too. You know, I mean, you don't see a lot of great, you know, extreme metal the three pieces. No, no, uh, Revocation recently became a three piece again. Yeah, they did. When, yeah, when Dan left, but they, they've got a touring guitarist now. I was wondering if uh, Dave was going to go back to just being the only guy back, like back in the day. But yeah, well, yeah, three pieces are gone out there. Motorhead. Gone. And so, what's the future plan here now? So this, uh, you know, so Vindication comes out in 2020. Uh, I would be remiss, uh, and, and I may hear about it from any fans in the comments section if I didn't ask. Is there a timeline on like when we get some new cryptic shift? Yeah, next year, I believe. Next year, okay. Yeah, okay. the writings for the next one's well over halfway. Um, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 how about when you guys get together and and sit down after a project and say, okay, uh, uh you know we want to go out and tour and support this do you guys have uh, uh discussions between yourself like what's everybody's uh, uh uh accessibility like as far as like you know coming up with an itinerary obviously it can be very difficult you know when the narrative in your life changes you might have a significant other or children or a job that doesn't allow you to go away for very long you know what, what kind of position are you guys in as a band and and how long are you able to go out for that's comfortable for you guys yeah we're, we're ready to go to to mars and back just on a whim really uh, me and ryan have lived in leeds all our lives yeah john john used to live in born in liverpool yeah he lived there for a bit and then he spent a couple of years in manchester but now he's he's fully moved to leeds and then joss uh was in bristol until a couple of years ago he's moved to leeds as well so we're all we're all in the same city and Practice you guys could through. go and you guys could go out on a lengthy tour and not have any problems with that everybody's in a position to do that yeah 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 that's yeah, a great yeah. position to be in that's a good position to be in. yeah but I, it is starting to become a little more prevalent i talked to a lot of artists on here who are just like you know i i work remote from home or i have a job that's very understanding it, it seems like post covid it's a lot easier to make that kind of arrangement now too yeah definitely Definitely. You know, and I think that's a nice luxury to have as a band. You know what I mean? Like when you're, you know, when you're fielding offers that are coming in, that must be a nice luxury to be able to say, ah, it's nice. We don't have to turn all these down. You know, I mean. Yeah. If anything comes up, we, we can just say yes. You know? Yeah. It is pretty cool. And do you feel like there's a difference uh, or are you anticipating a, a difference when you get over here and you're able to play in front of American audiences? Are you getting any feedback or, 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 or hearing anything uh, about the reception of your work uh, 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 from fans in the United States? I mean, going off social media stuff, I mean, we seem to have a lot of fans there. I think, I think if you look at like the analytics for all, you know, the band camp and streaming that, yeah like us is obviously one then it's then it's like japan and then uh then the uk so yeah yeah i mean most of our fans definitely mean in the us so it'll be it'll be aced when we can play there at last so uh so uh so you would say that cryptic shift is on schedule for world fucking domination it's going to happen soon absolutely yeah. absolutely i like that see if nothing else you at least got to have the confidence right xander i mean you at least got to talk it for a while you know what i mean like oh yeah you, sh you shouldn't do anything especially um be writing like concept sci-fi albums without being really <laughs> into it you know without having some confidence yeah you got to be yeah, confident yeah. to write a sci-fi concept album in today's music business and you got to have brass balls to write a 26 minute song nowadays i mean fuck yeah or longer who knows you know yeah that's oh so you're saying that are, are, are you already giving an inclination that there may be a longer song oh definitely on, on one of these albums yeah. yes yeah, watch, watch out yeah holy shit man a 26 minute song it, it is longer than some fucking punk hardcore fucking albums in their entirety i mean you, you, you know yeah, uh, it, is, yeah. <laughs> it really is <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah maybe i think we might have to uh like put part of the song on on uh, one side of the vinyl and then <laughs> do some sort of cut and then maybe we can get a voice of like, like please insert discs too Story <laughs> continues, this too and you know, some of that i mean why not it seems like it's all fair game now in the music world i mean you know it's not that rigid structure that it used to be and maybe some of the old school artists might still fucking like that old recipe like where a label saw you and they liked you and they signed you and they threw money at you and they put you on a bus and all that kind of stuff but there mm -hmm. is kind of like a sense of uh uh of probably uh of pride at least sometimes though if you can prove as a band that you can be 
a DIY band, but there is still certainly a big advantage to being on a, 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 a label. Even here in 2023, it's got to be advantageous. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they've been around for 30 plus years now and, you know, through all the change in music industry. So they're doing something right to stay open, aren't they? And when you get on Metal Blade, uh, uh, do you get any contact or does Brian Slagle reach out to you at all? Is he a fan? I mean, I've not met Brian yet, but I hear He's that uh, I hear that Brian approves everything. So that's, that's yeah. cool to me. That, that, yeah. And, and, you know, he is a good stamp of approval, man, because, yeah, yeah, you know, as you said, he's been doing this a long time. And Metal Blade has been, you know, uh, uh, a staple in, in, in the extreme metal world as far as labels go. I mean, you know, there's not many that have stayed in that lane and stay committed to it. Maybe Earache, Nuclear Blast, you know, a, a couple of them come to mind. But Metal Blade has been right there at the forefront for a long time, though. So that's a great label to be on, I would imagine. Oh yeah, just I'm the best. I mean, there's there's not a better one really. And do you guys put any pressure on yourselves because of the changing trends in the music business? Uh, uh, do you guys work at your own pace, or do you start to kind of like look and say, "God damn, we got to get something out here, or people are gonna fucking forget"? Because I get there's that that sense of urgency from a lot of acts today. Everybody is vying for like I had a guest on the other day that, that told me that uh, he read an article that sixty thousand new songs a day. Are put up on these streaming platforms songs yeah. i mean so there's an influx of music out there so do you worry about like god damn we haven't put out an album since 2020 people are gonna fucking forget who cryptic shift is we got to get something out or do you just work at your own pace and not think about that no you should definitely work at your own pace like no matter what really i think because that'll create the best it'll create the best product in the end at the end of the day yeah um yeah well because of the pandemic as well, we could only really start touring it at the end of 2021. So like a two year tour cycle is like pretty good for an album, you know, that yeah. we're like still into. And we just did a few days with Voivod and then in a couple of weeks we're doing some dates with Incantation. So the shows are still like rolling in. Yeah. It was still playing to new people. And uh, like I said, like the action figure stuff, um putting out stuff like that new merch it's all ticking along nicely so yeah yeah well yeah and then, and then with people um yeah like the sixty thousand new songs a day that's that's mental and that's great it's crazy yeah. a, a lot of people like to just a lot of people try and listen to everything which is just insane yeah these people that make um like monthly favorite new albums and there's like 50 albums every month and i know <laughs> there's, there's just no, no way, way you can, there's it. no way you can get into 50 albums every month man you know it's okay to miss a, a few months or a whole year or something just just to stick on the few albums that you love you know yeah i i try to be good about it and the podcast has certainly helped because i i you know i don't want to be that 50 year old guy who like when he has time in in a busy day and can say Geez, I'm going to sit down and listen to some music for my own enjoyment. I was very guilty for a long time, and, and, and the podcast has gotten me better about uh, about trying to keep my ear to the pavement and, and and check out what's going on in extreme metal and finding bands like yours and giving them a platform or whatever. But my own listening habits, it is hard to not say, God, I got a half an hour here where I can listen to some music, or I got a 20-minute car ride. I'm going to throw in the same old shit that I've been listening to for fucking 40 years. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to throw in master of puppets, even though I've heard it a gazillion fucking times, you know, it's hard to want to go out and kind of extend that olive branch, so to speak and say, you know, I'm going to embrace this new music that's out there, you know, and try to, and try to go find out the, find the good stuff and, and unearth some, some, some good new music. Yeah, definitely. Um, just, just take it easy. Cause it's all uh, yeah I, try, I keep telling myself it's okay to miss all the new albums you yeah know, yeah yeah I can't, get through 60, I can't get through 60 000 songs a day that's for sure no, no, <laughs> no. but um in the last few years there's, there's been like a few labels that have like consistently put out good albums like like yeah. 20 book spin for example is like the thing at the moment and then a couple of years ago it was like dark descent so like sometimes it's it's quite nice to just Right, I can just follow this label for for a few months. Yeah, and they're just my stream of music rather than trying to look in every angle like what's coming out. When you think of your native country of England, man, and and and, and you couple that with thinking at the same time about extreme metal out of your individual country there of England, who's the best? Who, who's the most legendary extreme uh, fucking metal band to come out of there? In your opinion, 
there's there's not many like like legacy acts like these carcass carcass bolt was thrower, one of those guys. yeah the carcass bolt thrower um is it napalm death that's from that's england or, or, or Nap napalm death yeah yeah i mean there's that's not like, many though huh that's for like the 90s and then you go into like 2000s and you've got I mean, these these didn't become like enormous though, but like Akakoka, incredible, mm -hmm. Mithras, incredible, and then you move into like the the noughties and the two thousand twenties, and well, it must be cryptic shift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are taking the torch. No pressure. No pressure at all, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you got some big shoes to fill there, man. So uh, you know. I think you should just come right out and say it right here on my podcast. Cryptic shift are the next carcass. There, boom, we said it, right? You guys there are you so great. Yeah. There you go. Someone's got to do it, right? I mean, why not you guys, right? I mean, carry the torch, you know? Yeah, man. I mean, we're doing this pretty crazy, like long songs, weirdo songs, sci fi. But yeah, I think in recent years, especially, it's, it's sort of become okay in, in like the general general like society to be kind of kind of a nerd and be into like wacky stuff so yeah it is I mean, good for us good for us yeah yeah it is good for you guys man i'm looking forward to hearing a lot more from you guys i uh and i hope we can keep in touch and uh you know when things get cooking we're getting close to a new album or whatever i'd love to get on here and do it again with you man for sure yeah absolutely man yeah, yeah i i really appreciate the time xander it's been a real blast getting to talk to you man and uh i appreciate you suffering through all the technological shit and getting back on here again and uh we finally made it fucking work i don't know somewhere in my settings it must have got fucking my microphone must have got bumped off because uh uh you know again it's technology man we're at its whim here yeah. i mean you know yes, anything can you've, you've got to you got to mess up yeah, I got to mess up. And you know what? I, I like to think that maybe the aliens intervened. Who knows? That know? was it. That was it. Meant to be. Yeah, it was meant to be. The shift was coming on and they had to stall it. For, yeah, we've we got to make sure, we've gotta make sure this transmission goes out. Absolutely. But, yeah, it's been a blast, Xander. Thank you so much. And, you know, I'll, I'll reach out to you when I put your episode up. And, of course, feel free to share it wherever, man. You know, uh, I, I appreciate that. And, you know, hopefully it gets you guys a little more exposure, too. But, uh, you, you know, uh, I had a blast talking to you, though, man. And uh, definitely keep in touch. We'll do it again soon. Yeah, incredible, man. You, you put it out on YouTube, right? I put it out on YouTube. Yep, yep. Yeah. I'll send you a link to my channel. I got a lot of good past ones up there too. So awesome. Yeah. Do, do you do you want um do you want us to send you like a shirt or something or a, a CD? That would be great, man. Yeah. yeah, I'll send you my details, man. I'll send you my details uh after we get offline or like my shirt size or whatever. That'd be awesome, dude. Yeah, I would love that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I'll, I'll reach out to you when we're done here, definitely. But it was great talking to you, Xander. Thanks so much, buddy. Awesome, man. Thanks. Been a pleasure, much. man. Yeah. All right, later, brother. There he goes, folks. That's a guy to watch out for. That's a band to watch out for. That is Xander Bradley, guitarist, vocalist for Cryptic Shift. Oh, please go check these guys out. Their last album, 2020's Visitations from Enceladus. Uh, uh, touching on very uh, 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 astral themes, outer space themes, uh, very sci-fi heavy leanings, but the music, the, the musicianship, the themes, uh, the balls to put out an almost 26 minute song. And then the other four songs are seven plus seven plus and five plus. These are guys doing it a little different, but very old school uh, mentality. I fucking like it, man. And, uh, I think you guys will too, man. Uh, just, you know, they're putting their own little bend on, uh, on the, uh, uh, thrash, uh, slash, uh, death metal sound. And uh, doing something very different, which I always applaud. Those are the important bands that go out there and check, man. The ones that are doing things a little different, going against the grain, man. Uh, I love it. I salute it. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. That was Xander Bradley from Cryptic Shift from England. Mr. Global does it again. Going out there and finding these fucking great bands and hopefully giving them a platform to, you know, grab themselves a few more listeners. Uh, you know, that's pretty much what it's all about now. The struggle is real. We're all scratching and clawing, uh, even in the podcast world. I mean, so anything that I can do to help, especially these bands that I really just listen to and, and just and, and just really fall for, man. Uh, these guys are really doing something special, man. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. And until we get together and we do this thing again, and we will do it again. Keith, Dave. Excuse me, Pops. It's not a lot of respect, you know, to your father. Pops. Diamond Dave, 
Keith, we will be doing this again. And it will kick ass. But until that time comes, I would like to remind you to take it easy and keep it sleazy.